Hi, and welcome to S for Science. This is biotite, one of my favorite minerals. It's characterized by its elasticity, similar to that of plastic, despite being a rock. It achieves this thanks to its crystalline structure that forms very thin and extensive layers. So thin. This piece actually contains several hundreds of these stacked layers, since they are a few atoms high. But let's talk about its sister. The muscovite is very similar to biotite, but its color is different. And it's called like that because centuries ago in Muscovite, an old Russian province, there was so much of it that it was used as an alternative to glass. But glass is not as stretchy, it's not as fun. Although it can work for you if you want to prevent birds from entering your house. What glass is, is viscous. Or at least, this is what it was believed until now. The Muscovy citizens with more money could afford glass windows. That, like the rest of the oldest windows in the European continent, today present a very fascinating peculiarity. Their lower part is thicker than the upper part. As if gravity had slowly deformed the glass, making it flow as if it was a liquid. Wait, could it be? Well, this in reality occurs because the pieces produced were of irregular thickness and the widest parts were used as the base to completely seal the frames that support them, preventing water or soil from accumulating that would grow plants. In addition, we have also observed that all telescopes and spyglasses perfectly preserve their focus without any distortion, something that would be easily detectable if there was the slightest deformation of the glass. In reality, this is an open problem in physics. There are authors that defend that solids without crystallization order, like glass, are actually liquids with a lot of viscosity. Although if you do the math and see how long it would take for a glass window to flow like water and fall to the ground, you get 10 to the power of 32 years. And this often is more than the age of the universe. When it happens, there will be no stars to illuminate the eyes of the scientists of the future. But luckily, we have tar. From it, you can extract something called pitch that is used mainly to make coal. Pitch is fascinating because although it looks like a solid, and if you touch it, it feels like a rock, in this case, it is considered a fluid. And here comes Thomas Pornell, physicist, and one of the most patient people in the world. This man wanted to visually verify how pitch behaves like the liquid it is. So he created the longest running experiment in history. He put some pitch in a funnel and waited for it to flow. Waited and waited until he died. Not before he could see two drops fall. Yes, two drops in his entire life. And he didn't die young. But the experiment is still running, 96 years after it began. On April 17, 2014, the ninth drop fell, and it is estimated that the tenth will fall in 2028. Unfortunately, the moment in which each drop falls, each drop is so insignificant in the time during which the experiment takes place that no one has ever been able to witness a fall of a drop. But I have good news for you. In 1944, a replica of the experiment was started in Dublin, in which in 2013, they managed to capture and video one of the drops that you're observing right now. Time is accelerated, two seconds being equivalent to one day. These experiments have allowed us to find the value of the viscosity of the pitch, which is 2 million times that of honey and 20 billion times that of water. Water can be fascinating if we play with its viscosity. This allows us to calculate the value of the Reynolds number that determines what the nature of the water will be. Because water can flow in two ways in a turbulent way, which is what occurs in most of the cases, or when the Reynolds number is less than 2040, in a laminar way. And then, amazing things happen. Turbulent flow is characterized by having its water molecules flowing chaotically and in various directions, giving the water a tumultuous and agitated appearance. It is what we almost always see. Waves break into the seacoast, a waterfall, a pipe spewing water, a river channeling what just rained. Although nevertheless, in a very everyday situation, you can observe the transition to magic. Let's go to my kitchen. The way to make Reynolds number small is by either increasing the viscosity of the liquid which is something very difficult to do, unless you know the architect of the universe, or slowing down the fluid. This is turbulent flow. It doesn't let light through well, and clearly looks very chaotic in its interior. However, if I now start to slow down the speed, you'll see what happens. 
Now we are in the transition zone, and here comes the magic. There you have it. This is laminar flow. Although, as you can see, it is not completely perfect because the flow that arrives to my house is not perfect. Neither the pipe. It is actually laminar flow, but it has small undulations that do not perfectly give the characteristic effect of laminar flow, which is that it looks like solid glass. But nevertheless, you can appreciate how light passes in a much clearer way than in the turbulent flow. And you can clearly see how much it is less chaotic than in the turbulent flow. If I, for example, put a spoon in, you will see that this uh, layer that is forming here is only possible thanks to the fact that water molecules are going in straight paths. But there is more, because if you look below, the laminar flow continues to a certain point. This ring that you will see here is the transition zone, because this is turbulent flow, while this over here is laminar flow. Laminar flow is characterized by having its molecules much more ordered, flowing in parallel trajectories to each other, without any type of turbulence, creating a flow of water with zero disturbances, and giving it a crystalline solid appearance, in which the water jet seems frozen in time. It's very spectacular to witness, which allows you to create really incredible and beautiful effects once you control the Reynolds number. I highly recommend that after watching this video, you look for more examples of laminar flow, or that at home, you put your imagination to test by trying to create a beautiful fountain. But then we come to rebel fluids, whose viscosity is not constant, the so-called non-Newtonial fluids. There are a total of five types, but in this video, we will see the two most common, those that, with increasing pressure, they become more viscous, and vice versa. A fascinating example of a non-Newtonial fluid that becomes more viscous with pressure is cornstarch mixed with water. Thing is, if you apply gentle force, such as sticking your hand in slowly, it would behave like water. But if you apply a strong and quick pressure, it will behave like a much more viscous fluid, allowing you to literally walk on it. It looks like magic. What happens here is that if the pressure is exerted slowly, all the fluid moves equally. But if the pressure is fast and strong, only the water has time to move to get away from the pressure zone. But not the cornstarch molecules. that are long chains of glucose put together. They basically hinder each other, creating a blockage and accumulating, increasing the viscosity of the fluid for a few seconds. Then we have ketchup, a total opposite. Have you ever wondered why it takes so much to take it out? This is because it is a non-Newtonial fluid, but contrary to cornstarch, pressure lowers its viscosity. This is why sometimes you have to hit it several times to get it out. We still don't know why this happens. Being ketchup one of the great enigmas to solve of the physics that studies fluid dynamics. It's fascinating. I'm hungry. But let's go back to geology. In fact, this video started with minerals because even rocks can act as liquids. And no, I'm not talking about magma. I'm talking about quicksand. If we get a soil with a very specific grain size to have a very specific amount of water, this dangerous phenomenon can occur, in which only if you move you will sink, since the soil will liquefy. In that moment it can be reminiscent of ketchup and you will understand why you should stay still. Something very similar can be done with air and sand, as demonstrated by my friend Diana from the Physics Girl channel. I will leave it in the description. I recommend it, it's very good. Although in this case we're talking about fluidization, since it doesn't contain water. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching the video, and goodbye.